in the L1. We define our future functions, future extraction process, and we collect data from websites in the previous videos. And lastly, I show a way of collecting data from legitimate and phishing websites. And eventually, we created a structured and labeled dataset in our last video. Now, we will build machine learning models and train and test them. But before that, I want to explain two important things. First one, in the previous video, I just showed an example data collection process for 100 legitimate URLs. And if you remember, we couldn't collect 100 website content because of some HTTP connection issues, timeout issues. But we obtained nearly 70 websites content. Let's say 70-75% of the legitimate websites can be collected. And after the video, I run the code for phishing URLs and I nearly collected 30% of URL list in each iteration. This is not a surprise because as I said in the previous video, phishing websites have short life cycle. Therefore, sometimes uh, HTTP connection was not successful or phishing website is not active anymore. But of course, this situation affects our data set size and the balance situation. Then I built machine learning models to see if data is enough or not. However, results were not good, therefore I decided to add new features, new HTML based features. Logic is same with the previous one. Remember, these are the existing features. Again, I used beautiful soft model and defined some features like number of D classes, is there any form tag, is there any iframe or number of sources, figure, etc. Source code is available on the GitHub and the link is available in the description section. You can see all of them. After adding these features, I obtained totally 43 content based features. And I modified the data collected file according to these features and I collected legitimate and phishing data again. Eventually, there are 16,060 legitimate websites and 10,523 phishing websites. So we can say that 65% legitimate and 35% phishing. It's not 50 50, it's not equal, but we can say it's a balanced data set because more than 20% of the data is phishing, actually 35%. Okay, let's look at structured and labeled data sets, CSV files. Two CSV files, one of them structured data legitimate and one other one is structured data phishing. Let's open it. The first line is for columns, column names. All of these are actually feature names, has title, has info. We have also at the end, we have also a URL. I added the URL information in case it can be important, it can be necessary for analysis. And also there is a label. If the URL is phishing, then the label value is one, otherwise it should be zero. Also, as you see, all of these values are numerical for these features. And always be careful about the data set. Uh, I want to show something more. For example, in this phishing CSV file, I noticed something. So you see some of the web pages, uh, some of the URLs are nearly the same. They have the same domain and very similar URL. But of course, there is a difference in here. And if you look at their you know, values, their feature values, you can see that they are all zero and similar. But look at this one, you can easily see the difference. After seeing this, I decided to remove duplicate vectors because they can affect our training process. And I will show in the coding part. Okay, now we have structured data. We can build our machine learning models. I will use scikit-learn to build machine learning models. And first of all, let's create a new Python file. Work machine learning. Like we did in our previous exercises in the previous videos, let's write the steps and then complete them one by one. Okay, the first one, step one is of course importing libraries. And step two is create the CSV files and create pandas data frames. We have two CSV files. We will have two data frames and we should combine them. So step three is combine legitimate and fishing data frame and shuffle. And step four, remember we have some duplicates, duplicate rows, and also we don't need URL column. So I will say remove 
uh, URL and also remove the bitrates, then create X and Y to underscore models. Remember, we will use supervised learning. So we need X and Y, we need questions and answers. And step five, after creating X and Y values, we can split data as train and test. So I will say split data to train and test. And step six, uh, create a machine learning model uh, using scientific learning. Of course, step seven, train the model. And step eight, make some predictions uh, using test data. After predictions, we can compare our predictions and the actual values so we can create a confusion matrix with the step line. Create a confusion matrix and of course true negative, true positive, false negative and false positive values. And last step, step 20, uh, of course calculate accuracy uh, precision and default okay for now i think it's enough let's complete these steps and uh, see the general flow that i will show key for cross validation and we will build different machine learning models using scikit-learn and finally we will compare the results and find the best model for us okay step one import libraries first of all we need pandas and numpy Then we need some uh, cycle learns different packages. Model selection and then uh, for models we will use from um, first of all import support vector machines or SVM. I assume you observe some models in the literature review phase such as decision tree, random forest, line base, edible. So I will import their packages from cycle learn import tree for decision tree uh, I will import those yeah layer base next one can be random forest so it's like learn sample and the last one add a boost again assemble Okay, I think it's enough for now. And also, finally, we will need some metrics. We need confusion metrics. So I will import metrics, import confusion, yeah, confusion metrics. Okay, that's all. Step one is done. Now we can continue with step two. Uh, step two is read the CSV files and create pandas data frames. Okay, the first one, legitimate. Data frame equals pd create csv and here you should add file name and we have structured data legitimate csv file and fishing data frame equals pd pd read csv file Okay, step two is done. Now step three, combine legitimate and fishing data frames and shuffle them. Again, I will use pandas contact function. So let's say data frame equals pd contact legitimate and fishing data frames and axis equals zero. Remember the columns are same, so we can make this comment line. And to shuffle, I can use sample command. This command uh, shuffle only rows. 
And step three is okay done. And now we can continue with step four. In step four, we will need to create x and y, but before that, we need to move the red column. So move across here, drop. URL, remember the column name is URL in uppercase and axis. And also, we have some duplicate rows and I want to promote them, so I will use df across df drop duplicates. As default, this method drops all duplicates and keep the first one. So, uh, if you don't want to, let's say, first one, any, uh, any of the duplicates, and you should customize this method. But for us, it's enough. So now we can create x and y. Remember, in supervised learning, x is input and y is expected output. Or we can say answers. So in our data set, label column is our answer because we try to classify websites as legitimate and phishing. So we try to find label of each web page. Therefore, I will say x drop label access one. And for y, I will say df label because remember. In our case, labels are our answers. Okay, so how is done? Now, step five, split the data to train and test. It's quite easy. I will use train test split function of the scikit learn. So, x train, x test, y train, y test. First one is x, the second one is y. And for the test size, I will say 0.2. Uh, test size is usually 0 0.2, sometimes 0 0.3. Test fit 0 0.2. By the way, 0 0.2 means 20% of the data will be test data and remaining will be training data. In other words, this parameter should be between 0 and 1. And also, I will say random state 10. The random state occurs none as default. And this is quite a helpful parameter uh, if you call the function multiple times, each one generates different test and training set. However, if you state random state, for example, as 10, like in our case, it will generate same train and test data whenever you call train test uh, split function. I want to obtain same train and test data in each iteration, so I use this. And step 5 is done. It's quite easy as you see. And for step 6, we will create a machine learning model using scikit-learn. I want to create support vector machine model as a first. I will build so many models, but for the moment, let's build one model as an example. And I will build support vector machine, a linear classifier. It's also quite simple. Let's say support vector SVM model. SVM classifier. I will use default settings. But of course, if you want to customize the model, there are several parameters such as penalty, loss, maximum iteration, etc. But default is enough for us. And step 7, training the model is also quite simple. Again, one line code. I will say it's film model. Let's fit x train and y train. That's all. In step 8, we will try to make some predictions using test data. So I will say a predictions SVM model predict using x test. Step 8 is done, now in step 9, we can compare the predictions with real values and we can generate the confusion matrix. Remember, I imported confusion matrix, so I will use this, and it gives us true negative, true positive, false negative, and false positive values, respectively. So, a confusion matrix, as y true, we need to give y test, y pred, y pred means y predictions. So we will give our predictions. Okay, now we have true negative, true positive, false negative, and false positive values. In our last step, we can calculate the accuracy precision and we build scores based on this. The first one accuracy equals um, true positive plus true negative divided by all of them actually. So I can say true positive for the precision. Remember, it was true positive divided by false positive plus true positive, so I will say true positive. And recall equals 
3 plus 3 divided it's plus negative plus 3 plus 2, so again 3 plus 2 plus 1. If these accuracy precision recall values are not clear in your mind, you can go to the video in the information part and see the performance issues of machine learning models uh, and some important details I explained in that video. Okay, uh, let's run the code and print the accuracy precision and recall values. So I will say print Okay, now let's run the code. Okay, as you see our accuracy is nearly 97% Precision is nearly 84% and recall is 30% Recall value is not good, it's low, that means a uh, false negative value is too high. By the way, when I say positive negative, remember positive means fishing in our case, and true negative means model's prediction is negative, in other words, legitimate, and the actual label is also legitimate. Therefore, the prediction is true. So, true positive is again a true prediction, and model prediction is fishing, so positive and true. If the model prediction is positive, in other words, fishing, and the real label of the content is legitimate, then it is false positive. Because we say positive, our model will say positive, but it's actually false. And lastly, if the model predicts as legitimate and the actual label is fishing, this is the worst case, worst scenario, then this is false negative. Because we predict, our model predicts as negative. So it says this URL is safe, but it's a phishing. So we want to minimize false negative in our case. Okay, I think you got the idea, but here there is a problem. Splitting your data as train and test is a good idea, but not enough. You should test your model with all data, not only 20% part of that. If you remember, I mentioned cross validation, uh, key fault cross validation methods in the video 7. Now I will show an example of key fault cross validation 